It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. You know, folks, Congress's rating is probably the lowest it's ever been in the history of the United States. So why would anyone want to run for the United States Congress? Hi, everyone. I'm Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, and particularly all our new viewers in the uh, Harrisburg, Scranton market area. We appreciate you tuning in. Dr. David Moylan, who is the uh, coroner of Schuylkill County, made an announcement a few weeks ago that he is going to run for the 17th U.S. Congressional District. Now, why would Dr. David Moylan, a very successful doctor with the Simon Kramer Institute, Cancer uh, Institute and probably doing a great job at Schuylkill County, want to run for U.S. Congress? Folks, today we're going to talk about facts. And please understand, these are facts we're talking about, not just opinions. Uh, it's very important that we learn about who the candidates are. Uh, let me welcome Dr. David, uh, Dr. Moylan. Thanks for coming on the show. Sam, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Today we're going to be talking about a different perspective because the last time you were on the show we talked about the coroner's position and meth, and meth the labs and the dangers of that. But however, you made an announcement a few weeks ago that you're going to run for the U.S. Congress, uh, which will be running against Congressman Cartwright. Um, now, first of all, uh, Dave, why did you decide that you want to run for U.S. Congress? Well, Sam, I made the announcement at our third annual Celebration of Life Cancer Survivors uh, p Picnic. And I think it was well received and it was an appropriate time to make the announcement because what has motivated me to uh, throw my hat in the ring, if you will, is uh, the sanctity of human life. And that's why I get up in the morning and go to work because I believe in trying to extend people's lives, you know, fighting the scourge of cancer. And when I ran for coroner. I ran as a pro-life coroner. And you might say, well, what the heck is a pro-life coroner? But it's very important uh, that every decision that you make as a coroner to determine the cause and manner of death, uh, how does it affect the sanctity of uh, life? So I've done that for the last year and a half. And it was brought home to me uh, last evening when we conducted a virtual autopsy. I think I've talked to your viewers about that in the past, but it's basically a CT scan to see if we can find out what went wrong inside a body that led to death. And we've been very successful at that. And we've done over 300 over the last year and a half. Uh, so it, it by and large can obviate the need for an open autopsy, which a lot of people object to. And it's just a a major undertaking to commit somebody for, for that. But last night we did a CAT scan on a baby that had died. It was a fetal demise, if you will, 34 weeks. And human gestation is basically 38 weeks, or if you count it from the last menstrual cycle, it's 40 weeks. So this baby was very well formed. And, you know, as a medical scientist, I realized that and I realized uh, throughout my whole career that these little creatures, they're human. And, you know, minutes before we were called to see them, they were alive. So that is human life. And I showed my, my deputies the, the images. And probably I don't, I don't know that there's many such images uh, in the world. But because you don't often get CAT scans on, on uh, dead people. But on a dead baby. So it was, uh, it was really awe-inspiring that, you know, that uh, the, the master work that had gone into creating this little creature with a brain and a heart and lungs and everything. So it was, a, it was an emotional time. But um, as a medical scientist, I know that the product of conception uh, is human and it's alive. And I know that that has to be protected if we're going to uh, succeed as a society. You, you realize, uh, Doctor, that right now, um, you know, there, there's a lot of opinions. And um, you, I'm certainly pro-life and I've stated from day one and I'm not embarrassed to say it. People know that. But however, being that, people think that, you know, I, I love when people say to me, but Sammy, that's only one issue. Now, there are other concerns out there, but life is the most important thing that we have to be concerned about. Now. 
that's going to be a very critical issue, okay, um, um, uh, in your campaign, because women think that it's women's care and that some women feel that you should not be infringing on their rights. I love when a Catholic woman tells me I would never have an abortion, but yet I cannot say I'm against it if the other person wants to have it. So it's just like saying I don't care whether you know someone doesn't kill my family, but if you want to shoot your kids, that's okay. It's just nonsense to me, but that's my opinion. Let's, let me take a look at what is critical. I said in the beginning of the show, we have the lowest opinion of you know, the Congress right now as, as evidence of what you know, we heard prior to coming on the show. When you're looking at the problems that exist today and all the nonsense and fraud that's going on in this country, um, you, know, you want to go to Washington, all right? And I think you put together a, a little presentation that we should look at right now and, and address that presentation. So we're looking here, Dr. Moylan goes to Washington for the 17th Congressional District, okay? Now, you're, you, now, what are some of the other things, if you go to the next slide, okay, these are some of the things that you've well, done. I just wanted to say that the good citizens of Schuylkill County entrusted me with the uh, task of being their coroner, and over the last year and a half, we've accomplished quite a few of our election goals, and one was uh, education. I want to be known as the education coroner, and we've set up monthly meetings in which uh, the 30 deputies gather together. We bring in outside speakers and uh, really try to get a, a top flight uh, deputy force. So I'm very proud of that. And then uh, in April, we had our second annual forensic conference in which we brought speakers in from uh, all over the state, experts in uh, forensic pathology, anthropology, uh, criminal investigation. And this... Uh, effort was uh, certified for eight hours of coroner education by the Attorney General's office here in Pennsylvania. And the third thing is, again, when uh, life uh, is snuffed out, there is a lot of grieving that goes on. And uh, we, when we see these uh, uh, patients, I still call them patients, but uh, we realize that they were somebody's mother or father, or daughter or brother and we set up a bereavement program that uh, Catherine Schuck, one of our deputies, has helped me with and done a great job. But we try to meet with every family member, you know, not immediately, but within a, a month or two months, and go over the findings of the virtual autopsy or the open autopsy, and that's been well received. And also we identified a major clinical problem, that is suicides. Uh, for the, m much of the uh, first decade of uh, this century, the rate was about 18 per year. Mm -hmm. And then in 2009, it jumped up to 35. And it's been hovering around there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's part of the economy, but we're looking at factors. And we have an extern from the King's College up in Luzerne who is helping us uh, get that data. And um, So what, what we're establishing right now is, uh, from what you're trying to tell me, is that you have accomplished these things as a school coroner. They, they gave me a task, and I'm... So to. now we have to move on to, well, U.S. Congress is a lot different than being a coroner. So folks, I'm talking to Dr. David Moylan, who is running for the U.S. Congress in the 70th Congressional District. Uh, he will be running against uh, Congressman Matt Cartwright. There is a definite major difference between the both candidates. Uh, we come back, we're going to find out, you know, what are those differences and why Dr. Moylan feels his position is the best position. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Lasanic Show. Remember, folks, 24-7, ssptv.com. You can watch every one of the shows we produce. Uh, all of my Sam Lasanic shows are there, so you can go back and look at a number of shows we've done. Just click on Shows, the Sam Lasanic Show. My guest today is a loser, uh, excuse me, Schuylkill County Coroner, Dr. David Moylan, who announced he is running for the 17th U.S. Congressional District. And so now, Doctor, in terms of, of, of setting this up, and, and you know what your district's all about. We have additional slides, so maybe you can explain what this is, okay? Um, what is that? That, Sam, is a salamander. Okay. And um, when I investigated the uh, daunting challenge of running in the 17th <laughs> Congressional District, I learned that the district had been gerrymandered. And, and there this, you go. This goes back to uh, 1812 
when a gov the governor of Massachusetts redistrict his uh, state uh, to favor himself in uh, some of the election of his party, which was the Democratic Whig Party. And you can kind of see, and this is the commentary up there, his name was Governor Jury, yeah. Oldbridge Jury. And they said, well, th the damn thing looks like a salamander. Yeah. And if this doesn't look like a salamander, I don't know what So was. this is your district? This is the district. Now, are you saying they, they, uh, they presented this directly to favor one particular party? Yes, and that was part of a, a deal that was cut in Harrisburg with the legislature. Okay. And so are you saying that this particular, your district right now favors the Democrat? This is meant to favor the Democrats, okay. and there's many urban areas in there. The, the city of Wilkes-Barre, the city of Scranton, okay. and then the tail down there is uh, Easton, okay. so many urban districts. Okay, so with all that being said, doctor, my, my concern has been, I don't care whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Independent, you know, I don't care what you are, whether you're black, pink, or turquoise. The thing is that the American people right now have been so buffaloed and so lied to uh, about a number of things, and when it affects their pocketbook, for example, um, you know, you, you have your opponent right now, okay? And I said there is a major difference between Congressman Cartwright and what you're hoping will be Congressman Moylan. Um, the other slide, which we'll put up, uh, Andy, okay, is, is, is maybe addresses some other areas. Okay, now let's talk about what is this record? Why is this so important okay. for you? I've been a member of the National Right to Life Committee for many years, and they give you regular updates or report cards on the legislators. And this was uh, the two pro-life or potentially pro-life uh, votes during the first session of the 113th Congress, which we're in now. And Mr. Cartwright uh, voted nay in both of these critical pro-life uh, votes. And uh, the one was the repair of, uh, repeal of Obamacare, and that has many uh, implications to, to life. Uh, abortion funding, insurances that now have to cover abortion, and uh, the other thing would be uh, conscience of the uh, providers. And you know that there's going to be legislature, legislation in there to force uh, people that object to right. abortions to somehow well, why uh, participate would, why in would, Why would Matt Cartwright tell me in my office when I ask him uh, if he was pro-life, he says, yes, I'm pro-life. Would this indicate that he is pro-life, these two votes? I do not believe so. Okay. This is right. uh, where so, the rubber meets, meets the road. From what I understand, in speaking to a U.S. congressman before we came on to the show today, uh, I was told uh, that Congressman Cartwright is probably one of the most liberal uh, congressmen that we have in the United States Congress. Now, this is what I was told by a, uh, by a US Cong current U.S. congressman. Um, why, does, why would that disturb you? Well, again, this is just uh, the symptom of uh, the malaise that's affecting our uh, country. But when I looked at Matthew Cartwright's stated positions, Pretty much everyone, I'm on the opposite end of the uh, poll, whether it's Second Amendment rights, whether it's uh, energy policy. Okay. Now, what voters should be understanding, okay? Um, and, and I love the fact when they say, well, how many Democrats are there in that area? Well, he's going to lose. How many Republicans are there? Well, he's going to lose, okay? And this is why we have the mess in our country that we have, and we have the mess in the state of... Uh, thankfully... In the state of Pennsylvania, we're beginning to see recovery, of which the opposite party is getting nervous about and beginning to lie about Corbett's uh, uh, performance. But that's another show. Yep. So what you saying to me, okay, and to our viewers, and I said to our viewers, I try to bring facts. And sometimes facts upset people, yep. particularly if you're a staunch Democrat or a staunch Republican and you're talking about a candidate who is Republican. We have in the, in the greater Hazleton area some really ultra-liberal Democrats, no matter if, you know, Obama said, you know, our Lord didn't exist, they would agree with him, okay? Which is, you know, that's as sick they are in their head as far as I'm concerned. I want to deal with facts, okay? Right now, the Obamacare situation, I see Democrats, I see unions are, are running away from this, okay, because they are beginning to see it. I'm going to read a letter to you, okay? This Please. is from one of my advertisers, okay? And folks, this is what's happening in the country. Uh, uh, dear Mr. Lassan, thank you for all the hard work you, bu you put in our recent advertising campaign with Samson Productions. Unfortunately, 
with the implementation of Obamacare in the beginning of July has really decreased our business. Therefore, we will be terminating our advertising campaign as of July 31st, okay? This particular thing, oh, not only me, not only me, but across the country, you're beginning to see a lot of employers being faced with this and a lot of people who are looking for jobs. See, this is a fact. When you show this to a person on the other side who, who supports Obamacare, they don't understand this until their job is affected or their income is affected. What do you intend to do about that? Sam, I have 15 months before the general election in November of 2014, and I'm committed to educating myself about every uh, aspect of Obamacare. And I did bring some props here. Um, maybe I can just bring this up. This is the text of the uh, Social Security Act of 1935. It's about 35 pages. So why, why is this important to me? Because this is the text of Obamacare. Okay, and that's why, only 150. Why does it have to be so complicated? Yeah. There's so many traps in here for the unwary. It's incredible. So when someone says to you, okay, doctor, um, uh, you perform this uh, procedure, and after the procedure, whatever happens, we'll see what happens after you perform the procedure. You'll look at that person and say, what are you, nuts? You know, you absolutely, you have to find out before what's going to happen when you have a certain surgery or you would get certain, you prescribe certain medicines, okay? But Congressman Belosi said, yes. let's pass the bill and let's see what happens after we pass the bill. And in that particular bill, there are so many taxes that people are paying for, as evident when Dr. Greco was on this show and explained it in detail, and it was like, Sam, you're picking on Obama again. No, I'm not picking on Obama. The point is that even his own Democrats now are backing away from this Obamacare. Yes, and the purpose of it, the official name is uh, uh, Affordability and Accessibility uh, Act. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that accessible, the latest government estimates are that uh, still 30 million people will not be covered. It, it is unbelievably such a disaster when people begin to look at it, and the only way it's going to affect people is when they start getting hit in a pocketbook. When we come back after break, folks, I want to show you something, okay? This is a picture was sent to me. Uh, remember I said we're dealing with facts. Now, how many of you go to the gas pump? Fill up your gas and you look at that building, you're looking at 60, 70, 80, 90 dollars and you scratch your head, okay? The first day Obama took office, gas was $1.89. Today, gas is about $3.75, 80 $60, it all depends. I was in New York last week, it was $3.95 a gallon. Why is it that high? when we have every resource available to us. You ever wonder why when we come back, Dr. Moylan's gonna give us his opinion as to why coal and energy is so important to us and where we going with our jobs. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam Hassan Show, folks. My guest, Dr. David Moylan, who is running for Congress in the U.S. Congressional 17th District. Very important election, folks, next year because as you know, uh, if you Google, if you understand, President Obama wants to do away with coal. Uh, that will uh, eliminate many, many jobs. So in the district, the U.S. Uh, Congre Congressional District 17, let's put the map up again, and Dr. Moylan will explain to you why coal, uh, the clean energy now, is important. Dave? Sam, when I looked at the distribution of this district, one thing that struck me immediately was this, with the exception of the little hook down there in Easton, and Northampton and the Poconos. This is the uh, map of the coal regions of Pennsylvania where uh, rich veins of coal run from the western part of uh, Schuylkill County way up into through Luzerne and Lackawanna counties and of course Carbon County, that's where it got its name. So that is the one resource here that will unite uh, the, the people of the district and as you point out, I'm not appealing to Democrats or Republicans. I'm appealing to everybody. When, when, I, hear, when I hear people say it's a Democrat district, uh, he doesn't have a chance, or even for a Republican district, I, I'm, I'm saying either side. I, I, I see myself in a situation of rage 
because I see senior citizens today suffering as much as they're suffering and because the government and, and the politicians lie to them constantly. I have not seen anything, and I, I, I'm going to bring Congressman Cartwright back, and he was very gracious to come on my show. I have seen nothing from Senator Casey indicating about the defense of the coal industry of supporting. I've seen nothing yet, and maybe I'm, I stand to be corrected, I see nothing from Congressman Cartwright supporting our coal people other than wanting Obama to get rid of them. Here we got $1.89 when he was first in office up to $3.89. We have the resources in this country without a question. Congressman Barletta said it. The, the, the people who've been sitting on in, in the show said, we have the availability of making our gas $1.50, $1.95, but yet we want to pay billions of dollars to it's people insane. who hate us, who actually hate us. Yeah. Give me some logic out of this, Dave. Oh, it's pretty hard to define, but um, <laughs> one of your other speakers in uh, years past has been uh, John Rich. Yes. And his um, uh, process, and again, he certainly didn't invent it. The Germans were working on it in the 20s, but how to turn the black diamond into liquid uh, gold. And, uh, you know, the applications in... Uh, jet fuel and military applications would keep our uh, citizens working for a very long he time. We came on this show time after time with Congressman Barletta. We had this, uh, evidently we had the state of Pennsylvania. I got to hand it to, um, at that time, Senator uh, Governor Randell, who, who, who was 100 percent. Here is a situation where we would have been a gasification plant, coal gas liquefaction plant, taking our coal, making fuel out of it. Everybody wanted it. Uh, from what I understand, the state wanted, etc. We had the opportunity yeah. of doing that at the very first time. I think the build that uh, plant was about three hundred million. Never wanted any grants from yes. my. Never wanted a, all he wanted was loan guarantees. He put his own money up. Okay, the, the rich family did to supply a thousand jobs, indicating we would be able to reduce our our dependency. Okay, and it would. But what happened? The politician got back. Wait, wait a minute. This is a political thing. We have to buy our oil. We have to do this because, God forbid, we should have we become self-dependent. And yet we scratch our heads. Senior citizens scratch their heads saying, well, how could I afford this when we have these opportunities? We're putting the wrong people in the, biz in the Congress, okay, that are continuously, continuously making us depend on the government. And those figures with the gas being close to $4 a gallon, it affects the price of everything. Across the board. Everything. What will you do in terms of, of jobs? I would look, uh, again, I'm on a fact-finding mission for the next uh, year, and I'm already meeting with health uh, officials from the various uh, hospital CEOs. I plan to do that with in industry also and find out what the needs are and how we can turn this around. Your position... Is there, it's clear cut here. There is there is no there is no middle of the road with you and, and Congressman Cartwright. You, I mean, he's ultra left, and you are a conservative. I'm a, I'm a conservative who believes in constitutional principles. Okay, and and from what the record is, it just seems that you know, do you feel that if that you feel if Congressman Cartwright continues to be our congressman, that we would we would see any kind of progress in his district as far as you know jobs, coal. Um, you know, Obamacare, because he's supporting Obamacare 100%. I'm just afraid the spiral dive will continue and it's going to end up in a crash and burn situation. How are you going to fight the liberal media? How are you going to fight the fact that they're going to downplay you as much as possible because we have the wacko liberal media out there today, and I say wackos because they really go over the edge. They don't report the truth, okay? Uh, as far as my opinion is concerned, we do have some media outlets that in this area, thank God, that do report the, uh, the truth, okay? My media partners, for example, the standard speaker, at least in, in my opinion, they've been very fair. How do you, how, you got a minute well, left. How you Sam, gonna, one thing I'm going to guarantee is Matthew Cartwright is going to outspend me in this uh, campaign. Yeah, he has a lot of friends. He has a lot of big money. I'm okay. going to burn up a lot of shoe leather, and I'm going to go to the people and shake hands. Folks, when I started the show, I said Congressman is the lowest ever, ever, because the people are not listening and paying attention. It, it's important. I know politics, you know, say, oh, they're all a bunch of bums, and they're not. There's a lot of great politicians out there working their, uh, their hearts out. Uh, take, for example, the state of Pennsylvania. The education bill right now is the highest it's ever been 
but yet you hear the opponents saying that this guy is anti, uh, the go Governor Corbett's anti-education. Reason being, folks, he's cut down all of the fraud, he's cutting all of the waste in the state of Pennsylvania. That affects the, the people who are dependent. If you get people depending on the government, if you get the entitlement people saying, oh, I got my free this, my free access cards, my free cell phones, my free this, my free this, do you think they want to work, folks? Doc, thanks for coming on the show. My privilege. We'll Thank have uh, um, Congressman uh, Cartwright, we'll have him on the show, and we'll have many more times we'll have these people on the show. Both sides, folks. My email, sam at ssptv.com. We'll see you next time.